Okay, pet parents, so we finally want to talk about FELV or feline leukemia virus. Well, buckle up because this one's a bit of a whopper. You know what to do, Biscotti. <laughs> Now, as the name implies, feline leukemia virus is a viral infection that affects cats of every different species across the world. And if we want to get specific, and you know I want to get specific, it's a type of virus called a retrovirus. And the reason they call it feline leukemia virus is because the virus was first discovered in a population of cats that all suffered from leukemia. Understanding that FELV is a retrovirus is actually pretty important. And to explain what a retrovirus is, I can get super... <laughs> specific about DNA, RNA, and gene insertion, but that's a whole lot of nitty-gritty nerdy details that I'm sure you guys don't want to know. So to keep things extremely basic, I'll just say that a retrovirus is a virus that can take its own viral genetic coding and insert it into the infected host genetic coding. Or to put it a different way, it's a virus that can alter or change the infected host's DNA. Cool story, bro. Why the hell do we care about that? Well, it's because since the virus can insert its own genetic information into the cat's DNA, by altering the cat's DNA, it can force the cat to develop a whole bunch of different diseases and syndromes based on how severe the infection is and where the virus takes root. The first example of diseases that FELV can cause a cat to develop by changing the cat's DNA is cancer, with lymphoma and leukemia being the top two common cancers FELV can lead to. If the virus is having a party in the bone marrow, it would lead to a decrease in production of red and white blood cells and platelets, and all of these values will be low on our blood machines. And if the red blood cell count gets low enough, cats will require a blood transfusion. The virus can also lead to cats developing a whole bunch of different autoimmune conditions, some of which can be fatal. If the virus gets into the central nervous system, it can lead to a whole bunch of different neurological diseases, and the virus itself is also thought to be neurotoxic, which is just as bad as it sounds. As with any other virus, FELV is a contagious virus that can spread from cat to cat, usually through body fluids, with saliva being the most common culprit. There's three different types of infection with FELV. There's progressive infection, meaning the cat's exposed to the virus and the body doesn't fight it off at all, the cat becomes completely infected. There's a regressive infection, which means the body partially fights off the infection, maybe the cat develops myoclinical signs and then the body clears the infection. And then there's abortive, which means the body completely fights off the infection and nothing happens. Thankfully, FELV is not too difficult for us to diagnose and we got a whole bunch of different blood tests to help us make that diagnosis. Treating FELV isn't necessarily straightforward. We do have some antivirals that we can use with varying results, but the other thing that we have to do is we have to be able to treat and manage any other disease or syndrome that is developing secondary to the FELV infection. The prognosis of FELV varies greatly because it depends on if it's a progressive or a regressive infection with progressive infected cats having the worst survival, and it also depends on what other diseases and syndromes have developed secondary to the FELV virus.